Fatto? Ci siete? Iniziamo? Finito? Ok. So, uh, hi everyone, uh, we will do this uh, conference in English, that's the first information to, to let you know, uh, but there will be the possibility to ask questions in Italian and they will be translated and uh, Alessio is the one who is going to do it. And of course, uh, yes, replies also are going to be translated. So uh, I would like to thank here Yanis Varoufakis for uh, accepting our invitation to come here and uh, tell us uh, the latest news about this movement and uh, of course also his opinion on what is going on in Italy. Um, I'm going to ask actually a question exactly on, on this, Yanis. It's going to be my first question. If you can give us some insight on your agenda and on your new alliances in Europe, uh, thinking about, the, of course, the European election of next year. Uh, because there, is, there, is, there was some talking about the uh, five movement uh, stars and also Melechon. Uh, so we would like to understand uh, if you can tell us some, something about uh, your plans uh, for the next weeks and months. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Thank you to all of you for being here. Thank you for your hospitality. And thank you for your question. But the main reason why we're here is because Italy today is being torn apart by two destructive forces. One is Brussels and the other is Salvini. By the failed establishment of Renzi, Merkel, Juncker, Moscovici on the one hand, and by the reckless, racist, xenophobic, anti-European Salvini project. What we are doing as DiEM25 in Italy, in France, in Germany, in Greece, has to be seen in this context. Today, Italy is ground zero of the European crisis. Italy should be in the focus of progressives around the world. Brussels and Salvini, this is a statement that may surprise some of you, Brussels and Salvini are working very well together, as we speak, against the interests of Italians in particular and of Europeans in general. Salvini is Brussels' greatest supporter. Mr. Juncker, Mrs. Merkel, Macron, et al. are hanging on to power with the argument, whatever mistakes we have made in Brussels, in Berlin, in Rome, talking about Renzi, after us comes Salvini, so you better support us. And Brussels is also Salvini's greatest supporter. By imposing on Italy rules that guarantee Italy's stagnation and falling income for average Italians, they enable Salvini's sortie into xenophobic populism. Allow me to turn directly to the issue that concerns most of you here in Italy today, the clash on the Italian budget with Brussels. Our position as DiEM25 is that both Brussels and the Lega Cinque Stelle government are profoundly and intentionally wrong. Brussels is wrong to impose on Italy fiscal and banking rules that guarantee Italy's stagnation, rules that were agreed to by the now collapsing Italian establishment. The European Union's revamped fiscal rules are analytically baseless. There is no such thing as a structural deficit. It cannot be measured and it should not be measured. It is based on faulty economics. They are forcing Rome to introduce new austerity at a time when Italy's growth has collapsed to almost 0%. 
if the Italian government, any Italian government, were to follow the fiscal compact, you would have an increase in the debt to GDP ratio, not a fall, because the denominator, your GDP, would go into reversal. You would have another recession. The Lega Cinque Stelle government is wrong also. This budget will not boost growth sufficiently to make a difference to most people, and the result will be a deficit overshoot without much benefit. Cutting, for instance, the top tax rate will not boost growth. When the rich receive a handout, they take it to Switzerland or to Luxembourg, or save it. Even worse, it is our view that both Brussels and this government know that they are wrong. <coughs> Brussels is choosing to be wrong because Brussels, the bureaucracy, is more interested in maintaining control over our countries than they are in shared prosperity across Europe. And the Lega Cinquestel government is choosing to be wrong because Salvini and Di Maio are more interested in maintaining this precarious alliance than in the prosperity of the Italian people. So, here we are, as DiEM25, facing this situation. Italy stagnates because its centrist establishment agreed to European Union rules that choked Italy, causing its own political demise, the political demise of the establishment that approved these rules, and paving the ground for Salvini. The ancient regime of Renzi et al. and his patrons in Brussels and the Lega Cinque Stelle government are two faces of the same problem. And they will continue to reinforce each other while Italy sinks, while Europe fragments. One of the side effects, the collateral damage of this clash between Salvini and Brussels is that we have stopped talking about the Eurozone reforms that are absolutely necessary to keep Italy in the Eurozone, to keep Greece in the Eurozone, to keep the Eurozone sustainable. Reforms that even President Macron discussed are now dead in the water. The oligarchic establishment, the PD, Forza Italia, caused the problem, and today they cannot pretend to be part of the solution. Salvini is exploiting this to bring through his rabid xenophobia a new fascist moment in Italy, while Cinque Stelle is increasingly discredited as a crutch on which Mr. Salvini is leaning to take over government completely next year. We must act now. Italy has an urgent need for a new progressive alternative to the implicit but destructive alliance between the establishment and Salvini's nationalism. But what Italy does not need from us progressives is yet another sad leftist alliance of the usual left-wing suspects. Italy does not need another Frankenstein left-wing list that stitches together the dead parts of what used to be Italy's glorious left. The last thing the Italians need is another list of leftist candidates lacking a coherent program of change, a Europeanist program of change that answers the question, what do you do with the banks? What do you do with public debt? What do you do with poverty, not only in Italy, but also in France, in Germany, in Greece? This is why we're here today, to announce that we are going to put together such a list with a single, coherent, credible program. You may very well ask, and who are you? Who are we who are going to do this? Last March, in Napoli, DiEM25, I was there, uh, colleagues, political movements from Poland, Denmark, Portugal, my friend Benoit Hamon from France, together with Luigi de Magistris, the mayor of Napoli, we embarked upon this project of putting together a transnational list with a coherent program across Europe. This program is now complete. After many months of very hard work, it is the progressive, ecological, feminist, humanist, rational program 
of the pan-European coalition that we now call Primavera Europeo, Euro European Spring. What do we propose? Because this is Italy and we have a major crisis, allow me to start with Italy. Let me give you an example of the kind of proposals that we are bringing to the table that address the local, the national and the European at the same time. The first thing we propose regarding the Italian budget is that the component of it which concerns minimum guaranteed income is introduced and indeed expanded. Simultaneously. Number two, scrap Salvini's top tax cut. When you give handouts to the rich, as I said before, you are not boosting growth. We have known this forever. Why have we forgotten it now? Replace those tax cuts with a growth enhancing green investment plan that pushes the deficit not to 2.4% of GDP, but to 3% of GDP. But most of it is made up of public investment. We are talking about something like 20 billion for three purposes. First, the industrial and ecological transition necessary in this country to solve, for instance, prob problems like ILVA in Taranto and offshoring of low added value manufacturing. Secondly, environmental safety, beginning with a plan for seismic prevention that we have included in our program. And thirdly, investment in infrastructure to avoid repetition of the Genoa disaster and invest in sustainable transport. <coughs> and what about the fiscal rules of the European Union? Our proposal is that we go from 2.4 to 3, but in a growth enhancing manner. Well, if the European Union wants Italy to adhere to the fiscal compact, it can be done. Our proposal is that the government of Italy calls for a U European Union Council summit to propose the following. In order to reduce the fiscal deficit of Italy from 3% to 0.8%, even to 0%, if Europe cares for this so badly. That we adopt as the European Union the European Union Council can give this green light as a result of one simple decision, no need for any treaty changes whatsoever, to give the green light to the European Investment Bank that belongs to all EU member states for issuing European Investment Bank bonds up to 5% of Eurozone GDP per year for five years. This is about 500 billion euros with the European Central Bank standing by in the secondary bond markets to purchase those bonds in the same way that it has been doing for the last few years. This way, you boost investment, public investment, through the European Investment Bank in Italy, in Germany, in Greece, by 5% of GDP. And that way, you can ameliorate, then you could have an Italian government which is reducing Italian deficit down to the levels prescribed by the European Council and the Fiscal Pact. This is part of our New Deal for Europe. You can see that we are combining a solution for Italy with a solution for Europe. Europe desperately needs a large-scale green investment program to create the good quality jobs that we are lacking across Europe, which are causing our young into precarious jobs in Germany as much as in Italy, which feeds the nationalist internationalism across Europe, racism, xenophobia. We need to make this investment in the green energy union that we do not have for many reasons, for the planet's sake, but also for the sake of becoming decoupled from Putin's Gazprom. DiEM25, in every country, we just gave you an example here in Italy, combine solutions at the pan-European level with solutions at the national level, indeed the regional level. Ladies and gentlemen, austerity for the many and socialism for the bankers has given rise to the present fascist moment in Italy. 
to the collapse of the political center everywhere, to the reactionary divided Europe that Mr. Trump dreams of. Today, here in Rome, we are saying enough. We are saying another Italy, another Europe is not only possible, but it is here in the form of our transnational movement with a single coherent program that, can, that people can believe in, in Italy, in Germany, in France, everywhere. Talking about our next steps. Yeah. We are here <laughs> as part of the process <clears throat> that we began in Napoli in March <clears throat> of this year with Luigi de Magistris, with Benoit Hamon of Generation, with the Alternative Party in Denmark, with Razem in Poland, with Livre in uh, Portugal, with Mera 25, our new party in Greece, with green parties that we are in uh, discussions with, with leftist parties, but what matters to us is that we do not simply present to you a list of people who want to be elected. That our list should have one common radical Europeanist program. Whoever wants to discuss this program with us, which is at a very advanced stage, you can go into europeanspring.net and read our program for Europe as a whole. Anyone who wants to discuss this can come along. The discussion, are you with Melenchon? Are you with um, whoever? Is not the kind of discussion that the people out there care for. This is old style politics, we're not interested in it. We're interested in solutions. Anyone who wants to join us on the basis of one program for the whole of Europe that works for Italy, that works for Germany, can come with us and will be part of this list. The European Parliament elections in May 2019, they are only a start. They give us an opportunity to have this debate. We will use the May elections to transcend the fake conflict between Salvini and Brussels, between the authoritarian incompetent establishment and the misanthropic Nationalist International. Diem Italia is here. We are moving up and down the country. We are scheduling three major events in November. There is going to be one, the final one in Milano. There is going to be one in uh, Taranto. There are going to be three major events. We are beginning to collect the signatures that are necessary for Diem Italia to run in Italy. We invite all the various partners that we had embarked upon this journey last March in Napoli to join us, but there is no more time to waste. We are moving, we are declaring our presence in Italy and elsewhere, because we are going to be doing the same thing. There will be a similar announcement of a political party belonging to DiEM25 in Germany on the 24th and 25th of November. In Greece, we have already started. In France, we are here not only to contest an election, but we are here to bring to the people of Italy a scent of next May's European Spring with a message. Italian progressives are no longer alone. Thank you. Thank you, Yanis. We open uh, to the questions, so if there are any. Uh, Avete bisogno di traduzione di quello che ha appena detto? Qualcosa in particolare? Ok. Sì, e allora... Hello, Angela Mauro, Affinto Post Italy. Uh, you didn't talk about immigration, which is a topic on which Salvini gains votes. So what do you have to say about that? I think it's a topical point in the next European electoral campaign for everybody. Thanks. Europe does not have a migration crisis. Italy and Greece, we have a migration problem. Why? Because there is no such thing as a European Union. Europe as a whole is large enough and rich enough to deal with this problem in a humane way. We must bind together in order to change the position of the European Union regarding migration. 
But we're not going to do it through using migrants as scapegoats. We're not going to succeed either saving our countries or our Europe by turning xenophobia or turbocharging, I should say, xenophobia like Salvini is doing. The fact that Salvini is gaining votes in Italy by becoming increasingly racist is simply a symptom of inability of progressives to bind together, to combine a rational approach to the problem with a humanism which is in the heart and in the minds of Italians and Europeans. Our position is very simple. The migrants that are coming to our shores are an essential resource for the future. Europe needs migration. We are an aging society at the European level. But you cannot pile up migrants in Italy and in Greece on the basis of xenophobia in Austria, in Germany, in France, which then gives a xenophobe like Mr. Salvini the opportunity to gather power in Italy through turning humans against humans. Allora, per rispondere alla sua domanda, eh, noi sappiamo che in Italia c'è un problema di migrazione. Perché? Perché non c'è l'Unione Europea, purtroppo. Eh, eh, L'Unione Europea è sufficientemente grande e anche ricca per poter pensare a questo problema dell'immigrazione in maniera più umana. Quindi dobbiamo senza dubbio cambiare la posizione dell'Unione Europea per quanto riguarda la eh, migrazione. Ma non lo possiamo fare sfruttando i migranti semplicemente per i nostri fini elettorali e politici, perché quello non avrebbe mai successo. Non possiamo eh, veramente sfruttare la xenofobia come sta facendo Salvini. Il fatto che Salvini stia eh, ricevendo così tanto consenso in Italia è dovuto a cosa? Beh, è dovuto al fatto che di fatto le, forte, le forze progressiste assieme non riescono a fornire un approccio razionale a questo problema comune che riguarda l'immigrazione, no? gestendolo magari con quell'umanesimo che è nelle cuori e nelle menti di noi italiani. Noi abbiamo bisogno di questi migranti che provengono dalle coste perché assolutamente sono necessarie, è dato anche l'invecchiamento della società italiana ma del, anche delle società europee. Quindi non possiamo senza dubbio eh, sfruttare la xenofobia in eh, varie nazioni, eccetera, perché altrimenti poi eh, finiremo per fare il gioco di eh, Salvini e finiremo poi anche per eh, porre eh, gli esseri umani gli uni contro gli altri, cosa che assolutamente vogliamo cercare di evitare. Simen. Yeah, um, hi, I'm uh, Simon Ekern from the Norwegian weekly paper Morgenblad. I wanted to ask you, you uh, were yourself, you became famous for, for opposing the, the EU Commission and its economic politics. I was wondering if you could just be a bit more specific on what exactly is the difference in the way that you, in, back in, the, back in your, your days, criticized the EU Commission and the way the Italian government is doing it now when it comes to the manovra, when it comes to the, the, the budget. Obviously, there's loads of, uh, of differences when it comes to immigration, for example but exactly the way that they are claiming their right to, 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 um, to have their own economic uh, policy. And then a, a second question on the Cinque Stelle. Have you completely given up uh, hope on seeing the Five Star Movement as a progressive force uh, in Europe? Do you now count them as uh, equal to, to Lega or do you see some kind of a possibility in the future of, 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 of changing that situation? Regarding the difference, between our opposition to the Brussels establishment and that of the Lega. We are radical Europeanists. We want to bring Europe together. We want, um, if you want, a federal Europe that works democratically. Whereas Mr. Salvini and his Lega would like to see the dismemberment of the European Union and maybe that its retention as nothing more than a trade zone. That is a profound difference. Profound difference. We are opposing Brussels because we are Europeanists. And as Europeanists, we're against the policies of Brussels that are destroying Europe and giving Mr. Salvini the opportunity to, to finish it off. On the second question, we never give up hope on anyone. Um, some of us are atheists within DiEM25. 
but we are all believers in humanity. Uh, Cinque Stelle have to decide for themselves whether they want to continue this path of being the crutch of a racist, xenophobic lega and to be working for them before Mr. Salvini chews them up and spits them out after the European Parliament election, or whether they want to return to a humanist bloc. If they do, we will welcome them. Io le, eh, allora, per rispondere di... alla sua domanda e sulle aspetta, 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 scusa, scusa. Vediamo se avete, avete bisogno della traduzione? Così risparmiamo tempo, andiamo all'altra domanda, ok? Sì, dai, sì. sì, ok. okay. Sì, se puoi fare un piccolo riassunto. Grazie. Okay. Allora, per quanto riguarda l'immigrazione, noi vogliamo appunto far eh, unire, unire uh, l'Europa, vogliamo un'Europa federale. E mentre invece il signor Salvini e la Lega vuole smembrarla l'Unione Europea, no? E di fatto magari la vuole ridurre poi a una zona di libero scambio e non è assolutamente quello che vogliamo fare noi. Noi siamo contro Bruxelles perché? Per un motivo, perché siamo eh, europei e come europei siamo contro questa politica di Bruxelles che alla fine finisce per fare il gioco di Salvini. Per quanto riguarda la seconda domanda, non dobbiamo mai perdere la speranza, no? alcuni di noi sono atei all'interno di DM25, però siamo tutti quanti credenti, credenti in che cosa? Nell'umanità. I 5 Stelle hanno eh, deciso di eh, prendere una strada e a questo punto devono decidere se continuare a seguirla eh, e magari lasciarsi diciamo così, sopraffare da una lega eh, xenofobica oppure eh, scegliere una strada diversa perché dopo le elezioni il rischio che verranno poi eh, estromessi eh, dai eh, processi. Sì, qui. Giovanna Ferrara, il manifesto. Io volevo fare questa domanda. Dal punto di vista di una nuova architettura dell'Europa, cosa ne pensa della particolare ehm, situazione che si è creata in Italia eh, riguardo ai conflitti interistituzionali? Penso al caso di Mimmo Lucano e penso anche ai casi dei porti aperti, dei, dai, dai comuni contro le circolari del Viminale e penso infine all'operazione mediterranea che è un'operazione nata eh, proprio per diventare l'incudine tra... Ehm, all'interno di questo conflitto interistituzionale. Okay. So Well, DiEM25 is a municipalist movement, not just a Europeanist movement. We believe that within a united Euro Europe, a democratic Europe, regions and municipalities should have a lot more autonomy. Indeed, the Eurozone crisis has reduced the autonomy of mayors, of regional authorities, by pushing authority down to the level of the local. And the result is a greater crisis, both of the local economies and of democracy. In the case of Riace, you will allow me to simply add to that which you all know, that I find personally quite interesting and uh, worrying that in an area where you have a particular mayor uh, effectively damaging the interests of the mafia by taking away uh, contracts from them, that this government, that at least part of it, was supposed to be absolutely determined to make a difference in this fight, is targeting this particular mayor in the way that they are doing it. This is why Diem believes that very strongly that this fake contradiction, this fake conflict between the establishment and the anti-establishment government is fake. Even down to the level of reaction. You see how fake it is. 
Hai bisogno di traduzione? Allora, per rispondere... Sì? Okay. Sì, sì, vai, vai. per rispondere alla sua domanda, allora, eh, noi riteniamo che eh, per avere una Europa veramente unita e democratica le regioni e le municipalità devono senza dubbio avere un ruolo molto eh, maggiore e di fatto infatti questa crisi europea ha fatto l'esatto opposto, ha ridotto, ha ridotto il potere eh, dei sindaci a livello locale. Questo ha portato ad una crisi sia delle eh, economie locali ma anche delle democrazie. Per quanto riguarda eh, Riace, il sindaco, eh, noi siamo tutti quanti a conoscenza del fatto che è una situazione preoccupante perché in una data zona avevamo un sindaco che stava di fatto cercando di togliere forza lavoro alla mafia, no? Con, togliendole proprio la forza della quale avevano bisogno ed è strano che questo governo che e non abbia incoraggiato le iniziative di quel sindaco e, e lo abbia invece ostacolato e addirittura anche e, e impossibilitato nel proseguire le sue azioni. Quindi noi riteniamo che questo conflitto esistente tra eh, l'establishment e l'anti-establishment italiano è poi alla fine dei conti fasullo e questo lo vediamo eh, in tanti eventi tra i quali anche questo. Grazie Alessio. Uh, I have a question also for you, Yanis. Um, I was, it's a curiosity actually, uh, because we hear a lot talking about uh, communication strategies to also, you know, um, attract the, the, the skeptical uh, the, um, citizens, uh, these er eurosceptical citizens that are uh, apparently growing. And I would like to, you to, to, to say some words on it. I mean, do you have a communication, a specific communication strategy, spin doctors and, uh, <laughs> and uh, these new tools? Are you using, are you planning to use new tools to Uh, to, to, I mean, to spread your ideas? We have no spin doctors. We do not have image makers. Uh, not because we can't afford them. Well, I don't think we can afford them. But we don't want them. And we don't want them because I think that people out there have had enough of spin. They have had enough of fudges. They've had enough of politicians. We are not politicians. We are engaging in politics. Not because we want to become ministers or members of parliament, but because we, we feel a historic duty to intervene in this fake conflict between the establishment and the so-called anti-establishment. The way we are approaching those who are skeptical, not just about Europe, but about politics, about the future, about the capacity of democracy to change anything. Those who agreed in the end, in the end with Mr. Wolfgang Schäuble when he said that democracy cannot be allowed to change anything. Yeah? We were determined to address particular issues with very specific proposals. Not wishful thinking, not we want another Europe, another world. No. You heard before the specific proposal about the Italian budget. We argued that, yes, to the minimum guaranteed income, no to the tax cuts, use this money for public investment, We explained where we think the money should go, maybe boost the deficit to 3%, but at the same time go to the European Union with a proposal, which is completely legal and within the treaties, on how to shrink that deficit down while boosting investment within a pan-European. So, speaking to people, to people's worries, and answering their number one question, which is, why should I be optimistic about the future of my children? The answer is because we have a capacity as Europeans, as Italians, to invest in the good quality green jobs for your children. And this is how we could do it. That is our spin doctoring. It, is the, it isn't an utopia, what you are saying? What is a utopia is to think that we can continue the way we're continuing. What is utopic to see is to think for Brussels that if only Mr. Renzi were to return to power in Italy to impose the rules of Brussels, everything would be fine. That is utopia. 
What is utopia is to think that Mr. Salvini beats up even more hatred for the foreigners and clashes with Europe without a plan for green investment that things are going to be better. What we are proposing is the only realistic plan. Is it utopic to think that realism can succeed? Well, maybe, but it's a realistic utopia, and it's the only thing that can stop an awful dystopia from setting in. You need to listen? No. no? Okay. Long. Okay, here. Here, would, here. Good morning. I am Luca Mariani, Agencia Italia. If it's possible, I would like to speak in Italian. Um, yes, yes, you can. Tre domande. La prima, lei sarà lo Spitzenkandidat per la Commissione Facciamo UE? Due. Oh no, brevissime. Spitzenkandidat per la Commissione UE sarà Mr. Varoufakis? Seconda domanda, chi sarà l'uomo di punta del vostro movimento in Italia? De Magistris, sindaco di Napoli? Terza domanda, io vedo Salvini che dichiara che a Mosca si trova più al sicuro che nelle capitali europee. Vedo Trump che ha un rapporto privilegiato con Conte e Farage. Forse qui non è una contrapposizione Bruxelles-Salvini, qui forse è in gioco un po' più grande. Lei cosa ne pensa? Of course it is a much bigger game, but Mr. Salvini is a major player. Hmm? Steve Bannon will concur. There are other players, Mr. Zehofer in Munich, those who will probably replace Mrs. Merkel, Mr. Orban, Mr. Kurz, and so on and so forth. But let me ask, uh, answer your question about Spitzenkandidat. This process has already died according to the um, Christian Democrats, they don't believe in it. The Social Democrats have ceased to exist. It seems to me that this process has been shown up for what it was, a fake democratic process. Now, DiEM25, European Spring, our alliance, are going to have an open primary before May to decide who is going to represent us in Brussels. So you can think of this as the speech and candidate of the movement. If you're asking me personally, I am going to make myself available to the movement. Uh, but let me also say that we are absolutely determined to break free of national divisions. In the European Parliament elections, our movement is going to have a German leading the ticket in Greece, there will be Greeks contesting European Parliament seats in Germany, there will be Italians in France, and so on. This is our symbolic way of doing away with this fake division between North and South. There is no division between North and South. No clash between Italy and Germany, or Greece and Germany. There is only one clash between progressives and those who are undoing our societies everywhere. And that clash happens in Greece, in Italy, everywhere. Uh, I think that's more or less what I want to say on this issue. Yeah. See? You need translation? You need the... Uh, no? no? Okay. So there is a question here. I can here. speak in English, but it's better, maybe Italian. I just want to... Uh, scusate, io volevo solamente chiedere, ci sono state la settimana scorsa le elezioni in Bavaria, le, regioni, le elezioni regionali, con la vincita appunto del Partito Verde guidato da una 34enne. Volevo sapere se queste elezioni in cui appunto per la prima volta un Partito Verde, una donna così giovane in Baviera, la terra del, dell'industria automobilistica tedesca, con un Partito Verde che parla senza peli sulla lingua anche di un numero chiuso per quello che riguarda le politiche migratorie, eh, volevo sapere se questo è un possi una possibile alleanza per, uh, per quello che riguarda la situazione tedesca di Diem in Germania e se Diem, quando parlavamo prima di uh, umanesimo nella risposta al, uh, al problema migratorio, che cosa significa? Cioè se si può parlare anche appunto 
senza censura di una sorta di numero chiuso legato chiaramente alla possibilità di dare educazione, e lavoro e un'accoglienza dignitosa ai migranti che arrivano in tutta Europa, parlo. We welcome the fact that the Green Party did well in Munich. They did not win Bavaria. They simply took the votes of the collapsing Social Democrats. The winners in Bavaria remain the forces of the right, the CSU together with the AfD. A crushing victory by them. Let us not forget that. Would we want to align ourselves with the Green Parties of Europe? Absolutely. We are in discussions with them. But I would answer the question in the same way that I would answer it if you were to ask me about the Linke, about liberals, anti-systemic liberals, by saying we're not interested in labels. We're interested in getting things done. So we put out a program which we call a new Green Deal for Europe, where we make proposals about this investment program of 500 billion in green transition a year, every year for five years. We have a program for what to do with public debt, with the non-performing loans of the banks, with poverty, with uh, democratization, and so on. It's a very comprehensive program. And we are inviting everyone to discuss it with us, not to accept it, to tell us where we are on and what we should do differently. And we wish that the Greens, the left, liberals, progressive conservatives even, come to us and we can have this discussion in order to start tabula rasa, a new progressive movement in Europe. This is our position and we're going to stick to it. Uh, on the question of humanism, humanism is inconsistent with electrified border fences. Full stop. So we have a question here and we have some more questions, so please keep your uh, answers short. Uh, your, sorry, your answer too, but <laughs> the, the, the question short, sorry. Hi, um, Yanis Atzerich, regularly of the Globe and Mail of Canada. The Italian government insists it doesn't want to leave the euro. Um, but my question is, do you believe them? Are they, uh, um, do they secretly or not so secretly want to leave the euro? And if they do, is it not a bad idea to do so in the sense that for 20 years since the introduction of the euro in Italy, this country has been a corpse. It, it's, it just hasn't worked for this country. Thank you. No, I don't believe them. What I do believe is that Mr. Uh, Salvini has chosen a two-phase strategy. First, beat up anti-migration rage, xenophobia, before the European Parliament elections in order to garner votes, but keep the Euro question under wraps for now, so that after the European Parliament elections, he can become Prime Minister and then go into phase two, which will be uh, not necessarily, um, there will be no referendum about the euro or anything like that, but create, cause a crisis that will make it a natural progression for Italy uh, to forge uh, a parallel currency that then is the precursor of something very much like Italexit. This is my personal view, but it's neither here nor there. Uh, the second question, would it be a good idea to get out of the euro? I have been very steadfast in my view on this regarding Greece, regarding Italy, regarding all Eurozone member states. And it is this. Some people think there is a contradiction in what I'm going to say. There is no contradiction. First, we should not have entered the Eurozone. Italy should not have entered the Eurozone. Greece should not have entered the Eurozone. We should not have created the Eurozone. Not that a common currency would be a bad idea, but this common currency, with these rules, think about it. We create it a central bank without a treasury to have its back, and we have 19 treasuries without a central bank to look after national banking systems that they cannot ever save during a crisis. It was as if we created a monetary union designed to cause problems for our citizens. That's point number one. Point number two. We should not have a policy of exiting that terrible monetary union. Some people say, hang on a second, you just said that we should not have entered it, but now you're saying we should not exit it. Yes, because it's one thing to say we should not have come in, 
It's quite another to say, we should get out. It's not the same thing. Because once you get in, things change. And getting out has a major cost for Europe as a whole, for Italy. It does not mean that we should not prepare a parallel currency. I prepared one when I was a minister. It does not mean that we should stay in the euro even if our countries collapse. No. It means that we should be prepared, on the one hand, to go to Brussels, to go to Berlin, and put forward proposals for making changes to the Eurozone that will allow Italy to breathe within it, and at the same time prepare for exiting, for the very simple reason that even the Bundesbank is preparing for an exit of Germany, because this is a very unstable currency. Thank you, Yanis. There is a question over there. Yes, yeah, sorry to bring you back to the Italian politics. This is Don't be sorry. Cabarogno this is why I'm here. Okay, thank you. Francesca Barogno from Agora. No, I want to ask you, in case of a crisis of the Italian government, what are the chances of uh, Mr. Di Maio to be your partner? And then, do you see a default of Italy as a possibility? I'll start from the second part. Hmm. I think a default will be... Uh, Unlikely. But there are ways of haircutting debt that do not count as default. So, for instance, one of the things that is not unlikely is that there will be, in the case of Italy, in Italian public debt, um, financial incentives for Italian savers to buy more bonds with tax breaks that clash with Brussels rules, for instance. Uh, a parallel currency would, uh, if there was a redenomination of part of the debt, would also be an effective haircut that would not count necessarily as a default. But this is a theoretical discussion. What really matters is that we avoid this clash between this government and Brussels, a clash that is not leading to any uh, improvement in the lives of Italians or the rest of Europe. On the first question that, that you asked, um, I think I've already as answered it. As I said, we are atheists who happen to be faithful in human nature. If Mr. Di Maio uh, drops out of this government and stops being the crutch of Mr. Salvini and Cinque Stelle join again the ranks of uh, humanist, rational, political forces, we would be welcoming them as well. But okay. I do not see this happening. Every day they stay within this coalition. I believe Cinque Stelle is losing its soul. But have you been in conversation, for example, with FICO, the, the, the one who is considered on the left of the... We've been in conversation with many people, not with a particular person that you mentioned. At least not me, maybe somebody from our movement has. Maybe I can ask uh, one, one of our DiEM25 uh, representatives here uh, to, 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 to answer the question. But this is not the issue. The issue is, is Cinque Stelle interested in reclaiming its position uh, on the humanist side of politics? Thank you. There is another question over there. Uh, yes. And then here. Go to. Um, I'm Italian and uh, the, um, the Deutsch Italian from Berlin. Um, I, we know that you are going to meet uh, as soon as possible in, uh, uh, in Benny Sanders. So uh, we would like to know something about the international progressist, as we call. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Well, thank you for the question because this is something quite exciting. DiEM25 is not only Europeanist. Or well, actually, we are Europeanists because we are internationalists. Uh, Europe is uh, a source of great instability for the rest of the world. We are causing serious problems for the rest of the world through our inability to solve our crisis. At the same time, we have an American president who is determined to uh, destabilize what is left of the stability of the world. And we have a complete failure of the West, of the European Union, the United States, to get their act together to deal with a global crisis which began, began in 2008 and which has not finished. Anyone who thinks that it has finished um, should reconsider their views. 
This is why we need to go beyond the limits of Europe. You see, the financiers are internationalists. They know how to bind together to make sure that the majority of people in every country bails them out after they've made their huge errors. The fascists, the, rational, the, the, the nationalists, the racists like Trump, Bannon, uh, Zerhofer, Salvini are internationalists. They bind together magnificently. The only people who are failing are the progressives. So on the 30th of November, Bernie Sanders and I are going to be launching the Progressive International in Vermont. And we're going to make issue an open call to political forces from across Europe, from Africa, from Asia, from Latin America, from Central America, to join us. It is going to be a very difficult process, but at least there is going to be a start. Thank you. Uh, Paddy? Okay, uh, Paddy Agnew, on the Independent. Uh, professor, uh, to change uh, theme slightly, Brexit, uh, is, uh, you, you say Salvini is working towards the disintegration of the European Union, or that's his aim. But uh, have Mr. Farage and Boris Johnson started the job already? Uh, and do you feel that, uh, that we are in a Brexit situation where the 27 countries say, unless we get a, an Irish border resolution, there'd be no deal? Do you think the 27 countries will hold together on that? Yes. But then the question is, will London prefer no deal to a united Ireland, because that is the issue, really. I do believe that, um, and remember that DiEM25 is a movement with a presence in Ireland, both the Republic and Northern Ireland, and we're very proud of that. And we've brought people together that they would not have been in the same movement if DiEM was not in Ireland. We think that this is a magnificent opportunity to bring back the, the concept of, in a non-sectarian way, of a united Ireland. The border must never return. The Good Friday Agreement must be um, maintained and supported. And Europe has a role to play in this. But let me say something about Brexit. You said, you mentioned Mr. Johnson and Mr. Farage. They would never have succeeded to win the Brexit referendum if it was not for the incompetence of Brussels and Frankfurt in handling the inevitable crisis of the Eurozone between 2010 and 2016. And let me explain this. Let me explain this. At a time when the financial world was collapsing between 2008 and 2010, the European Central Bank, completely hostage of its charter that was written by the Buddhist Bank, was shrinking the money supply while the Bank of England was boosting the money supply as if there is no tomorrow, the Bank of Japan, the Fed in the United States. The result was hundreds of thousands of Italians, Greeks, Spaniards, Portuguese moving to England at a time when Mr. Osborne, the Tory party treasurer, was imposing austerity on the majority of the English people. So you have the very floating of the financial markets in England drawing people from the continent while British workers were being treated with austerity. That was a recipe for creating the Brexit movement. It was Brussels and Frankfurt's policies that gave rise to the disintegration of the European Union with Brexit. This is why DiEM25 is determined to clash with the Brussels establishment in order to save the European Union, in order to make sure that borders like the one between the Republic and Northern Ireland never come back. Thank you. Hey, there is a question there? Yeah. 
Posso? Sì, sì. Eva Giovannini, mezz'ora in più, Rai 3. Eh, volevo tornare sul tema sollevato prima dal collega della Russia. Ci sono so, insomma, sollecitazioni esplicite sia da parte di Washington che di Mosca verso il governo per andare dritto su questa manovra e si parla anche di possibili aiuti economici del Cremlino per comprare debito pubblico italiano, la cifra che gira è 6 miliardi. Volevo sapere da lei, in termini politici, che cosa significherebbe per noi italiani essere debitori verso Mosca e quindi per Mosca essere creditori verso l'Italia. Grazie. È una very bad idea. Very bad idea. For two reasons. Firstly, Russia is bankrupt and the most they can do, the most they can do is buy 4% of your debt issuance for the next year. In the next year your debt issuance is 250 billion. If they choose to, they will buy 4%, it's irrelevant. So they can't help Italy. That's one reason. Secondly, you shouldn't want to be helped by Mr. Putin. The last thing we need in Europe, in Italy, is more dependence on Mr. Putin. Or indeed Mr. Trump, for that matter. Remember, Mr. Trump and Mr. Putin are united by a wish to see a Europe that is disintegrating and becoming more reactionary, and more right-wing, and more fascistic. This is why we're here. We're here because we need to fight against Mr. Putin, against Mr. Trump, against the Brussels establishment that is making Mr. Salvini powerful enough to be playing these games with Mr. Trump and Mr. Putin. Glass, if I don't, uh, I, I mean, I, I remember something similar uh, promised to, to Greece, right? I mean, Russia also promised to buy Greek bonds some years ago. I've written about this in my last book, which is, exists in Italian, Adults in the Room, and I explained why I was the one member of the Greek cabinet under Mr. Tsipras who effectively vetoed any discussion with Putin on us being helped by Russia against our struggle with the Troika. For the same reasons that I am outlining here, um, I refused to even go to Moscow, along with Mr. Tsipras. In the end, of course, Mr. Putin did exactly as I predicted and said to Mr. Tsipras, we don't, we're not going to help you. Okay, uh, do you need the final translation? Do you? Do you? It's okay? Okay. So, Yanis Varfakis, thank you again very much for being here. Uh, thank you to you all. And that's well, it. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> okay. You, you, everything was, was okay. I'm, I'm glad you're happy. I mean, you can.